Robert, if we if we take a step back, even from that component of understanding what type of leader you are, do you think, and, and I know this question has been asked in many ways, nature versus nurture, but do you think there are some people who are more prone and are going to excel in a leadership positions and people who are not? And if so, well, let's start there. I have, I have a lot of follow-up questions, but because uh, it's my view that it, it's not easy to be a leader. I always tell the story of um, Christopher Columbus when he was pitching the deal to get the money to um, go and find the new world and find the treasure. He had never been on a boat. He had never directed a crew, never been on a boat. And he was just like pure vision, trust in himself. And, and you see this all over again, uh, the Steve Jobs story, right? Like sold the computers without ever uh, before having the computers. So there's that component of absolute trust and certainty that of course can go the wrong way. We've seen the stories. Um, I forgot the name of um, the lab company that, that had a, a Netflix series in the book. I forgot the, the, the blood testing. Um, Theranos. Company. Theranos. So of course, like too much vision, if you believe it, um, it, could, it could be a lie and, and that's not good. But do you think that there are people that are more prone to be leaders and they should pursue that and some others that don't and they might just be a, a focus on hey i'm going to be a really good team player i'm going to be um i don't know the difference in the midfield and i'm not going to score the goals or or take the lead but i'm going to do my job really well or do you think that's like whoever wants to if life puts them in a position they they can become a leader you're asking a key question, and and also I'm not sure I did justice. You know the, what we were talking about before. Part of what we did when we interviewed lots of leaders for the book, we also interviewed psychologists, uh, organ an organizational psychologist, to ask them, "Do you think you're, we're crazy?" Because mm. for before developing the Fab's leadership assessment, it's just is this idea does it does it sound rational or not? And so all of the leaders, all these wonderful um, operational leaders, we asked all of them uh, what they thought. Um, but we also had a set of psychologists and uh, did the same thing with them. And it was basically, are we crazy? So it was the first validation we sought, which is no one said, you're nuts. It, it passed the smell test, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so it's interesting talking about, you know, people wired for leadership or not. Gallup organization uh, uh, did a study and, and said 90% of leaders are in the wrong role. The wrong role. And um, one of the organizational psychologists we interviewed in the book, his name is Bob Murray. He's a brilliant uh, I'm going to mess up the exact title because it's kind of the biology of, of how humans live in society and are wired. And what he said to us is, is that traditional tribal society really wasn't wired to need leaders. Hmm. It's not necessarily part of, of, of human wiring that in, tra that in traditional cultures, you know, you'd have a village of 150 people or so, you knew everyone, um, those kind of cultures don't necessarily need, we have to have a leader uh, in front of us. It's not necessarily part of wiring. Um, our wiring, it has evolved in corporations and organizations the way that it is that there is going to be hierarchy. But I'll tell you, Alejandro, I think one of our primary points um, with having put out the book is to a lot of leaders to put out this message, which is, get over yourselves because leadership of organization, if you're really good at it, is only one of an infinite forms of human genius. And we pay too much attention to it because our culture is too monetary. And so leaders who are really successful get rich. Many, maybe not deservedly so, um, but we celebritize that. And one of the problems in business and organization is we assume because a leader has done one thing well, they can do everything well. 
completely not true. Completely not true. And in other areas of human excellence and professionalism, we've moved beyond this. We have not yet in business and organization. So the example, an example we use in the book is in medicine. You and I, next time I see you, we're gonna go, we're gonna have a nice lunch and you're gonna tell me, you're really having a lot of pain in your foot. You're a runner and I don't know what's going on. Well, if I know a great podiatrist, even better podiatrist who specializes in running, I'm gonna say, Alejandro, you gotta see this guy, he really helped me. I am not going to send you to a cardiologist Mm-hmm. or an OBGYN. I'm just not going to do it. And so there is this field medicine that professionalized and developed specialties to the point where if I sent you to the cardiologist, he or she would say, you need to go to a podiatrist. I don't do this. They're not even going to try to solve the problem mm-hmm. because it wouldn't be professional. Yet in business, oh my God, Somebody does one thing and it works and we just think they can do everything. No one is all things to all people. Swiss army knife approach to to excellence in organizations, it went out long ago. That message has not been received everywhere. And so we see continually examples of failure that rack up because of that.